not sure if you're aware of this phenomena yet. Hopefully not. But uh, I became aware of this phenomena by seeing it here and there on the internet and uh, looking into it a little bit more and finding out what the hell was exactly going on. If you've seen these people around, they're usually guys, maybe around my age, a little bit older, uh, who are the kind of guys that you find in comic shops and uh, hobby stores and things like that. Not even, I mean, they're, 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 this type of, of geek is like, is like a, a caliber past the type of nerds that you'll find uh, like myself in EV games or Fry's Electronics or something like that. This is like the utter end of like the nerd boy spectrum. These guys have picked up this fad of taking an interest in my little ponies. 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 Apparently, uh, in conjunction with Hasbro, some people that worked on Powerpuff Girls and da 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 came up with this show in order to market My Little Pony Crap to a new generation of brainwashed consumer lings, little children. Uh, remember gotta remember that Hasbro only cares about the toys. If you want to support the show, you gotta buy the toys. Yes. It doesn't matter what they are. Oh, look, there's some more up here. Little did they know that as they started to market this show, it would develop a cult following of grown-ass men. Uh, so you think you're a brony? Yes, I do think I'm a brony. All right, all right. Uh, simple brony question. Uh, the butt symbols. What are they called? What do they mean? They are called cutie marks, and they they basically are people's ta the ponies talents. Uh, this show marketed originally for little girls. So I guess how it all began was on an image board site called 4chan. I'm not sure if you guys are well aware of that site. But 4chan is a place where a lot of the memes that we appreciate now in the internet community first spawned from the fevered minds at 4chan Image Board. And so originally the My Little Ponies thing started as a kind of joke, like, oh, as a meme kind of thing, like using the ponies to say inappropriate, I guess, not even inappropriate, but just kind of cutesy, off-the-wall things. And I guess like a, a small group of people realized that far from being a joke, they actually were in love with the show, My Little Ponies, Friendship is Magic. And so uh, here we are. It grew and grew and grew. And it's developed into like a hardcore, what they call a quote unquote fandom, a hardcore fanboydom on the internets. Let's take a look at some brony footage, live in the wild. Hello. Hi, YouTube. I think Matthew is slowly starting to become a brony. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, I was looking at this, I was like, look at that. I just George and Thomas would like this thing. It has all the ponies. Let's see, it has Fluttershy. Rainbow Dash, Applejack, Rarity, I like Sparkle, and Pinkie Pie. Oh, and it has Spike too. I think George Thomas would like this. Oh, oh, it says all these. Oh, and Spike the Dragon. That would be good, wouldn't it? I think I'm done. Okay. Uh, I kind of like this one. I get it. Dar I Eat goo, man. Hmm? Wait, what okay. are these? That's a better toilet one anyway, I bet. Yeah, I'll get... These are actually better. Here we dash and... Got it. You dropped this. Now, it's obvious that this is not a simple phenomenon. This is not a simple psychological phenomena happening 
but rather a confluence of various social, psychological, you know, kind of conditions coming together to produce some kind of novelty that, that these people are finding from My Little Pony's Friendship is Magic. Some of the conditions which are involved, I would say, um, the, the kind of lack of, of gender identity that we have nowadays. I mean, a lot, of, a lot of guys have this, like, stereotypical idea of how to be a guy, and a lot of females have this stereotypical idea of how to be a chick. But I really don't think that that hits on home of what really it is to be a, a, a male or, or a female, in essence. Not that everybody's exactly the same, but, you know, there's certain qualities, like, for instance, you remember about your father or your mother, which are archetypal, I think, to, 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 to gender roles, at least in this world. And I think in absence of a really kind of normal, not, not, a, not an overly cartoonized, stereotypicized uh, gender kind of role, in the absence of, of a non, rather, over-stereotyped gender role, in the absence of, a, of, of an understanding and appreciation of gender, which is more holistic, which is what they had maybe back in the day. Can you imagine, like, you know, so your grandpa or somebody back in their day playing with something like this? Of course not. Because things are much more simple, not so goddamn complicated as they are now, where we don't even know, you know, any, any, any kind of role for, for, for genders. And we just say that they're basically interchangeable. If he wants to play with little ponies, that's fine. Go ahead and play with little ponies. What does that mean? He's redefining masculinity and all this. Well, fine then. Then that term doesn't really have any meaning. So I think part of it is the kind of lack of 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 a real kind of identification with gender that has meaning, rather than just a kind of stereotype, er, man show kind of stuff. Something which 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 hits more home in a more deeper sense. Of, of manhood, you know, not just macho macho shit, but a sense of, of class, a sense of, of maturity, and a sense of, of compassion, and other things which can be associated with manhood, which are not necessarily, you know, Rambo-style stuff. So, I mean, there's that, and there's this kind of vacuum that people have in, in, in their minds. You know what I'm saying? Their minds are so easily influenced by other people, by, by, by fads, by, by societal trends, especially novel shit like this. You know what I mean? By novel, things which are kind of new and, and different and, and interesting to people for a certain reason. Um, so the mind is, is not like fully formed. The personality is not like fully formed. Because people don't really see that in their surrounding. They don't see and they don't get raised and they don't get taught and they don't get brought up with reality. They get brought up with lies. They get raised in falseness, raised in illusion. So they, they rebel against it when they're teenagers and they seek this novelty. And this is the crap that the mega corporations are feeding on right now by throwing stupid novelty at teenagers who are rebelling against their parents they give them the crap novelty the stuff you see on MTV or you know music videos or brony videos this is a kind of shitty bottom of the barrel crap novelty that the corporations are excreting they're bending their asses out from you know the east coast and in, in, in new york city and shit like that bending their asses over the country and excreting all of this novelty in the form of My Little Pony's Friendship is Magic and uh, other things like that, Jersey Shore or rap music and all that stuff. They're, they're excreting this novelty and the teenagers, it's like, they don't know anything better so they're eating it up. They're like, oh, what is this magic manna from heaven? Oh my God, it's so wonderful, yes. Because for some reason... They also associate that with, like, the rebelling against the parentals, I think. Because, I mean, I've been a teenager before. That's why I'm saying all that stuff. And I can feel all the brony hatred coming on me right now. 
Durga Durga Durga, so what if he wants to watch Brony or My Little Ponies and da 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 da? Well, I mean, <laughs> you don't even want to watch it. It's really not about you. It's not about a, the person who has identified themselves as a Brony. They have really little to do with it. It's more just about kind of a collectivism, kind of a, like a cult of Bronyism that you feel like you're part of something you feel like you belong to something it's kind of like a lot of the reason why some people join gangs or join the military um and malice rebel news too made an interesting point he said he quoted marx who said that religion is the opiate of the masses and said it's kind of like an opiate to people who who uh, referring to the to the bronies fandom he said that it's kind of like an opiate for people who are feeling disadvantaged by their society, not able to get jobs, etc., etc., etc. So they turn to this kind of thing. I think it's more than just his kind of Marxist rhetoric, kind of dialectic, though, that it's it's less to do about the kind of Marxist class struggle, blah, 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 that Mao's Rebel News 2 is always trying to push, and m more about an inner spiritual vacancy an inner spiritual vacuousness which these kids are experiencing and, in, and a lack of satisfaction that they find in their home life, their family life, and traditional ideas of gender and society and things like this is completely out the window. So now venturing into uncharted territory with, with a, a weak mind and a lack of fulfillment and a lack of security and I'm already at the fringes of society anyway. A lot of a lot of these type of kids, you know, like myself. But I never really considered myself that much of a, a nerd or got that hugely deep into a fandom, I guess. I don't know. Um, or if I did, it certainly wasn't, you know, My Little Ponies. But, uh, yeah. So, I think that the whole issue here is more about feeling you know feeling that you fit in with this fandom feeling that it's it can be a part of your identity that you use to kind of maybe even it's it's something like kids need to use this as a part of their personality to develop that that kind of side of themselves that they feel has been repressed maybe that might have something to do with it too i'm sure like i said this is a very complicated kind of psychological issue to to uh, to to uh, examine and i don't think anyone or two answers uh, can can tell the truth, and I don't think that bronies should just act as if it's just something flippant and and not take it seriously, because I think you can learn a lot about not only yourself and a lot about uh, you know marketing strategies and how that the government and corporations uh, work to to keep our kids in this mind rottingly corporatized state where like the one kid said Hasbro only cares about buying the toys so if you want to support the show you need to buy the toys just like the kid said so you can learn about how the system works <laughs> you can learn about yourself about you know masculinity about femininity there's no reason why a guy has to be completely devoid of any you know, just softness whatsoever. I'm not saying that. And so, see what this is kind of bringing up this conversation, and that's that's fine. But uh, I do think that there's something kind of off, man. If you're, I wouldn't even call it gay at all. That's that's an insult to gay people. If you're just after the same kind of feelings that a, a little girl is after. If you're after the same kind of, you know, shows and, and that, that can keep your interest and hold your attention, then what's that say about you? I watched the show. I watched the My Little Ponies. I tried to watch it for a little bit. I thought it was mind-rottingly dull and done over and over and over again. It's the same as any other cartoon. I think these kids are, like, blinded by the flashy kind of um kitschiness of it well look
Look at what we've got here, brother of mine. It's the same in every town. Ponies with thirsty throats, dry tongues, and not a drop of cider to be found. In the same way that everybody was utterly drawn in when Pokemon came out, because of just the everything was just all so artistic, you know, art and like the different elements came together and just created a, a nice little kitschy universe which drew you in. It's the same thing with My Little Ponies, is creating this little kitschy universe that draws, it's meant to draw in little girls, but somehow it draws in the mentality of old men. What in the hell is going on with our society? Anyway, I, I'm trying to be fair, bronies. I'm being fair. I think I'm being very fair. But uh, I, I can't help but be against this, man. This is, this is insanity. What's it say about you that you are utterly drawn in by something which is geared towards the mentality of a five-year-old girl. When I see these kids, they look like little girls. Like seriously, I even had a picture on my Facebook of one of the bronies dressed up like a girl. And you say you're normal and everything. It's not normal <laughs> to want to be a little girl, man. In this world, you can't be a little girl. This world's gonna tear you up and, and chew you up and spit you out. I don't know what the hell you're thinking. Yeah, you've been lucky to be able to be taken care of by the government and society and your parents and things like that. But you think that acting like a little girl is gonna get you through life on your own? Especially if we didn't have this nice cushy society. Say it's in, in, in previous times where you're out living in the forest, having to rough it. And you think that in that kind of environment you can just go on behaving like a little cutesy little girl? Your mind has become warped and warped and warped by this. Man. Bronies. I just, I can't even believe this is a fucking thing. I can't believe that I'm sitting here having this conversation. When I saw that bronies was a real thing, I couldn't believe it. And to this day, I still, I can't fucking believe it still, that it's a real thing.